Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales says Janet Lim Napoles will not become a state witness in the Port Bile scum case. This after Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre suggested turning Napoles into a state witness in the investigation of the Port Bile scum case. Morales says the Ombudsman will block any attempt to make her state witness. Well, as I already stated, uh, we don't find her to be a candidate for uh, being a state witness. We will have the last uh, say on whether or not uh, we will recommend her to be a state witness. As head of the Justice Department, Aguirre's only power is to admit the policy into the witness protection program, which is not the same thing as being state witness who is immune from suit. Rule 119 of the Revised Rules of Criminal Procedures says the body that prosecuted the case gets to recommend the state witness. In Napolis' case, it is the Office of the Ombudsman that will recommend to the Sandigan Bayan. The Sandigan Bayan will then make the final decision. Speaker Pandalion Alvarez has no endorsement for the impeachment complaints against Vice President Leno Robredo and Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales should be expected anytime soon. Alvarez says lawmakers are still studying the contents of the impeachment complaints against the two officials. He adds the earliest time the public may expect an endorsement will be in August because the 17th Congress will take a break starting June 3 and resume session sometime in August. Two groups, the tandem of Marcos Loyalists Oliver Lozano and Melchor Chavez, as well as the Impeach Lenny movement, are urging lawmakers to endorse their impeachment complaint against Robredo. The Volunteers Against Crime and Corruption drafted their impeachment complaint against the Ombudsman. The House Committee on Justice on Monday junked the impeachment complaint filed against President Rodrigo Duterte by Magdalong Representative Gary Alejano. Former Maguindanao Governor Dato Sajid Islam Mampatuan is ordered arrested for corruption two years after he secured temporary freedom on massacre charges. Sandigan Bayan 6th Division issues a warrant of arrest against Mampatuan for 145 counts of corruption, all of which are bailable. The bail is set at 3.57 million pesos. Also ordered arrested were Ampatuan's former provincial officials. Ampatuan's camp says it will post bail soonest. Ampatuan's charges stem from school building repairs in Maguindanao from July to September 2009, which were all supposedly fake. State investigators also found that the contractors who supposedly supplied lumber to these repair projects were fictitious. Ampatuan was charged with 4 counts of graft, 4 counts of malversation, and 137 counts of falsification of documents. He was imprisoned for 5 years for being one of the principal suspects in the 2009 Maguindanao massacre, which killed 58 people, including 32 journalists. It is the worst case of election-related violence in recent history. President Rodrigo Duterte on Tuesday says he is ready to sponsor the supposed entry of Turkey and Mongolia into the Association of Southeast Asian Nations even if both countries aren't part of Southeast Asia. Duterte says the Turkish President and the Mongolian Prime Minister made the request to him when they met on the sidelines of the Belt and Road Forum in Beijing. Under the ASEAN Charter, admission into ASEAN is based on several criteria. Among them, location in the recognized geographical region of Southeast Asia. Turkey, while considered to be straddling Europe and Asia, is nowhere near Southeast Asia. Mongolia is bordered by China and Russia. United States President Donald Trump allegedly divulged top-secret intelligence to Russian diplomats in the Oval Office. The Washington Post reports Trump revealed highly classified information on ISIS during a meeting last week with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak. The intelligence reportedly came from a U.S. ally who did not authorize Washington to share it with Moscow. That development could shatter trust that is essential to intelligence and counterterrorism cooperation. National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster denies the President revealed intelligence sources or methods. But he acknowledged Trump and Lavrov reviewed a range of common threats to the two countries including threats to civil aviation. The Post, citing unnamed officials, says Trump went off script during the meeting, describing details about an ISIS terror threat related to the use of laptop computers on airplanes, revealing the city where the information was gathered. The Trump administration recently barred the use of laptops in the passenger cabins from several countries in the Middle East and is modeling the expansion of that ban to cover jets originating in Europe. 